Hi, my name is Penny Tovar and I am a licensed registered nurse. I'm currently finishing the last class of my bachelor's program and I graduate in early December. Yay! I wanted to make this video to show the world what exactly it is that nurses do. For my last class, I am taking a clinical course. I was assigned to do night shifts at a labor and delivery unit at my local hospital. I have three 12 hour night shifts coming up this weekend and I wanted to bring y'all along for the journey. So let's get started. I actually already had my first clinical day and uh, witnessed birth for the first time and um ouch I don't have any kids I'm not pregnant but I'm already mad at Martin because of what I have to go through so let me get to the freaking point so the very first step is to pull an all-nighter so that I can prep my brain to stay up for three consecutive nights and that night ladies and gentlemen is tonight time for an update it is currently 3 in the morning don't do your homework at 3 a.m challenge no seriously please don't do your homework at 3 a.m do it on time stop procrastinating you procrastinator martin is asleep and i definitely don't want to wake him up because he has to work tomorrow or i can wake him up and take this video in a whole different direction pouring ice on husband at 3 a.m putting husband's mattress in the ocean at 3 a.m punching my husband in his freaking face at 3 a.m i'm just joking y'all i would never do any of that I don't exploit my relationship for views. Two hours later. It's literally, it's 5.20 in the morning and he comes in here like a little kid, like, mommy, I had a nightmare. Get out, go to sleep, you have to go to work tomorrow. I have to go to work in like an hour. Did you pee pee in the bed? Stop. You need, you need mommy to change the blanket. <laughs> Good morning, y'all. It is 11. Oh my, oh! I did not plan that, that just happened. That was magic. Now that I'm awake, I'm going to clean the house and I'm gonna start preparing for the first of three consecutive 12 hour night shifts. I'm gonna be working at night. So I got my scrubs on, my top and my pants. Shout out to Goodwill. And now I'm gonna take care of my hair. My hair looks really good right now, but I can't have it down. I have to put it up. So someone play me a sad song on the world's smallest violin. So for my skin, I'm just going to moisturize with some rose water. And then I use a facial oil. I'm very much a facial oil kind of gal. This is squalene oil from The Ordinary. All you need is three drops and you're good to go. And that's it. That's pretty much my daily beauty routine. So now I have to pack food for 12 hours. I get pretty freaking hungry during night shifts. So let's go do that. So this is my food arsenal for the night. And then the last thing, which is what everybody needs, is a freaking water bottle because you get thirsty as frick. My shift starts at 6.30, but I leave the house at 6 just to get there a little early. To get inside the building, you have to buzz this intercom so they can see your face before you get in. And here we are, the labor and delivery unit at my local hospital. Here's the waiting room where loved ones can wait for their family member to give birth. Oh, look, this means somebody had a baby girl. So beautiful. Look at this basket of baby hats. They're knitted by freaking volunteers. How sweet is that? So this is the nurse's station. This is where we all hang out, huddle, pass on report, and chart. Next, it is time to go to the linen cart and grab scrubs. We are not allowed to wear our own scrubs. 
we have to use a pair provided by the hospital. The reason they do this is to prevent us from bringing bacteria from our home to the hospital. It's also for security purposes, so you can tell who actually works in the hospital. Right after I get into my scrubs, I go to the nursing station and we huddle, kind of like football, like foosball, and the charge nurse and the nursing leaders give us report on any updates in the hospital or on the floor, on any patients. And then after huddle, we take a report. So we go to the day nurse that's gonna pass on her patients to us, and then we take report on that patient so that we can continue care. Let's go. So this is what we call a brain. Obviously not a real one. It's basically a piece of paper where we write down the handoff report as well as take notes throughout our shift of the interventions that we implemented as well as our assessments. On the left side are my hourly assessments of temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, and input and output. On the right side, I have my interventions. I inserted a Foley catheter in the patient at 2128, and I applied sequential compression devices to the patient's legs at 2031. And we also have to monitor and manage her intravenous medications, which are magnesium, lactated ringers, and Pitocin. All right, so it is 11 o'clock, and I'm having my first snack of the night because I'm pretty freaking hungry. And it's my chia pudding. See, it's like a goop, okay? That kind of looks like doo-doo, but I promise it's really good. So this TV keeps track of the baby's heart rate and mom's contractions. So there's different patients in different rooms. So that's baby's heart rate and that's mom's contraction. See that wave right there? That's a contraction. Another huge part of nursing is charting. There are physical charts and electronic charts. It's where we find the medical orders, lab results, x-rays, patient history. They are legal documents in which all medical professionals need to record their interventions and their assessments. Y'all, I just did my first successful blood draw. Look at that's blood. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. Look y'all, it's my first ever successful, but my second attempt. This was my first attempt, unfortunately, but my second attempt was successful. You wanna be in here or not? <laughs> Yay! Thank you for being a brave soul. Yeah. <laughs> it is currently 2 a.m. Um, our patient is 9.5 centimeters, 100% effaced, with plus two station. She is really close to having our baby, but we're gonna have to wait like about another hour. Y'all, it is hitting me hard right now. <laughs> it's almost time to go home, yay! First, you have to finish all of your charting, and then you have to do a handoff report with the day nurse so they can continue care. And then you can go home. Alrighty, it is now 7 a.m. and my shift is over. I can finally go home and sleep. Also, update on the patient. She never... Sounds like a freaking the mentor from Harry Potter. Our patient never ended up giving birth. She was so close, poor thing. She was pushing all night. She was so tired. I feel so bad for her, but you know, she's trying her best. Now I can finally get some sleep. So I got home at 7.20 a.m. and was finally able to get some sleep. Unfortunately, I woke up at 11.30 a.m., which means I only got five hours. However, Martin was home when I woke up, which was a really nice surprise because I completely forgot it was the weekend. He works during the day and I'm working at night, so we usually don't get to see each other for about three days. So it was nice to just go outside and go for a walk together. And of course, we continued to binge watch one of my favorite animes, Monster, highly recommend. <laughs> And in the blink of an eye, it was time for me to prepare for my second shift. So I packed some food, made some more chia pudding, and I went on my way. So it is 6.20, I'm gonna go to the nursing station, huddle, get report, and see what kind of patient we have today. So there are multiple roles on the labor and delivery unit. There's antepartum, postpartum, labor and triage and flexing a lot of different roles which is really cool because you can like switch it up every shift and it doesn't get boring it's like a box of chocolates you never know what you're gonna get so um, we're gonna go get report and see what kind of role we have to play today so for this shift, we were assigned as flex nurses. A flex nurse is a baby nurse. When a patient is actively pushing and we are expecting a baby soon, we go to that patient's room to prepare for the arrival of the baby. 
and we also assess them after they are born to make sure that they are healthy. One of the key things we do is that we set up a panda. A panda is a bed warmer, but we have to set it up with emergency supplies for the NICU team in case there is a need to resuscitate the baby. There's also suction tubing to remove secretions from the baby's airway, and we create this little pillow where the baby's shoulders are placed to open up the airway. Look at this tiny little face mask. It's so cute. I also wanted to show you guys something really cool. They're called voceras, and they're basically like little walkie talkies that go on our chest so we can communicate and call other nurses on the floor. Vocera. Call Papa Murphy's. I didn't understand. Vocera. Just kidding. I was also given the honor of visiting the NICU, which is where high-risk babies are sent to be treated until they are healthy and stable enough to go home. Look at this teeny tiny blood pressure cuff. So freaking cute. And look at this little diaper. I mean, it's not going to be cute once it has poop in it, but like, it's cute, right? Okay, so it's midnight. I'm in the break room and a lot has happened already. We had a baby delivery and it was successful. And I just visited the NICU for the first time and it, oh, the babies were so tiny. There was a baby who was two pounds and I put a feeding tube in him. And there was two preemie twins that were also like four pounds each. So yeah, that was really cool to witness. I also got the chance to visit the OR and witness a C-section and you can see the fear in my eyes. <laughs> Alrighty, so I just got out of the OR, which is really unfortunate because I wanted to stay and see what was happening, but I'm really tired. Um, unfortunately, there was a patient who kept bleeding a lot. So the doctors are seeing what they can do to help her and figure out why that, that's happening and how to fix it. So yeah, today has been insane. It's 6.30 a.m. I'm bushed. I want to go home. I didn't record any footage of the third shift because it was a really chill night. We had an induction patient, so it was just a lot of hourly assessments. But the entire experience was so amazing. I learned so much. I was able to practice a lot of skills. And it reminded me why I love being a nurse. And it makes me even more excited to go find a job. Alrighty, so it has been four days since my last shift. I was exhausted and desperately needed to get some good quality rest. But all in all, I really enjoyed the experience. It was so amazing and it just reminded me why I chose to become a nurse. It just brings me so much fulfillment to care for another person when they're so vulnerable. I always strive to be kind, gentle, and advocate for my patients to give them their definition of quality care, which is exactly why I wanted to tell you guys this. I have put off my nursing career for two years because of social media and I don't want to do that anymore. Next month in November, I'm going to be actively applying for work and that is definitely going to affect my uploading schedule on all my platforms. And once I have my routine down of my new job, I'm going to look at my schedule and see what can be my new uploading schedule. The adjustment is definitely going to be difficult, but you know what? I'm excited and for me, the future looks bright. So if you want to stay updated with what I'm doing, you can follow me on my Instagram. Comment, like, and subscribe, and let me know down below if you would like to see more nursing videos. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!